cool. Uh, all right, well, fresh back from jury duty. <laughs> um, I've never, I've got called for jury duty maybe once, um, and, uh, and they tell you to go home, but if you're gonna serve around jury, that's kinda, that's kinda cool. Maybe we don't wanna broadcast that live even though we're live. So um, in any event, um, welcome back. We got a couple of guests uh, here tonight um, who know each other uh, pretty well, or at least we're about to find out <laughs> how well. Um, but we have Bob and Joyce Stanowski uh, here tonight. And um, we're gonna just explain why they're here in a little bit. Um, but just a general welcome. Um, we, hi Jonathan, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. We just wrapped up a, uh, for all intents and purposes, a successful three week series on our slogan of Faith Family Fellowship. And, um, and we had guests on the past two weeks and um, it was a lot of fun and it provided some really, really good insight. So tonight um, we thought we'd kind of keep up uh, um, the, the dialogue, the group dialogue, and it's February and, and February is the month of love. And, uh, and next week is Valentine's uh, Day and we're not gonna be here live next week so we're doing our Valentine's Day program <laughs> one week early. Um, so so tonight topic, tonight's topic is going to be um, a little bit a little bit different in that regard and I'm really really looking forward to it. If you are watching live, thank you and welcome. I will also put a little plug in that um, these always get uploaded to our YouTube channel so I will put a link to YouTube um, probably tomorrow so you can uh, get so you can so you can watch it and just be added to our library. Um, and then one programming note this Sunday after service is our annual meeting. So it's really uh, important to be a part of. And Jonathan, you're leading the service this I'm Sunday. I'm leading service for the first time. Jonathan is leading service for the first Whoa. time. Right. <laughs> Pressure's on. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Anyway, John, you have some stuff for us to do today. I do. I have a, uh, a variation of the newlywed game, and, and <laughs> no means are these two fine folks newlyweds. But um, I have six questions. Bob, you, these are yours. Joyce, you have yours. Uh, I've asked Bob and Joyce to answer these questions in private, sort of. <laughs> sort of, um, sort of. <laughs> and um, we're going to compare answers, see how much on the same page you guys are. So ready? All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to go Bob, Joyce, Bob, Joyce, Bob, Joyce, in terms of who the question's about. So first question, Joyce's favorite question place to eat out is I and go ahead let me say it okay. yeah yeah well hold your yeah. answer up hold, oh, hold, hold it up yeah that's we good we want too. to make this suspenseful yeah. <laughs> both of you hold it up Wait, just okay <laughs> okay <laughs> off to a rough start <laughs> <laughs> well join us next week <laughs> yeah. I was I was stumped on that question yeah um, this is a hard question we haven't been we usually don't go out to eat during COVID. Too often. We basically yeah. ate uh, in all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Ordered, yeah. Ordered so, dinners and bring it home. Right. So right. Home. So Joyce said her favorite place to eat out is home or an Italian restaurant. And Bob, you said. I said Jesse Camille. Jesse he, Camille. He's right. And that's right. Where, I don't know I'll Jesse Camille. I don't, I don't know that either. Where's where that? Of course, on uh, Route 63, uh, going to Okay. Oh, yeah, going so, that way on yeah, 63. Yeah, it's pretty good. It, and in the summertime, it's really lovely outside, you know. Is that Hot Brook? Hot no, Brook. Hot yeah, Brook. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. See that? Jesse Camille. I'll yeah. count that as half a point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are sponsored by Jesse Camille. Jesse Camille, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we were first married, we'd get all our answers right when we... we oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> we did. That's I'm sure. Yeah. Now we're married 42 years, and it's like... We don't know each other anymore. Excellent point. <laughs> Excellent point. Excellent point. Excellent point. What's the next one? Uh, all right. So second question. What is Bob's favorite outdoor activity? Oh, gosh. We have two golf answers. Oh, yes. Very good. I know, yeah. Bobby, you love to golf. Bob I, loves I to do. golf. We I do am the, the uh, golf widow. The That's golf right. widow. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's on next week's program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Number three. Joyce's favorite color. Green. Green. Oh, green. Oh, green, nice. green, green. Just yeah. about three for three. They say geniuses pick green. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you didn't pick it. <laughs> but you didn't pick it. Okay, number four. Uh, Bob's favorite meal 
aka breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only two people I know that wouldn't uh, they picked the wrong answer the, they answered the question they wrong the right, right wrong yeah, answer yeah, exactly. you guys have the right I, I wrong love answer it. and I've literally had soup for breakfast soup for lunch and soup for dinner what? a number wow. of times and so. soup has, lover she's got it and is snacks too is before bed when he gets up yeah mm-hmm. it's, uh, in the afternoon snack addict I, I, oh yeah. Is I that like because it. Joyce makes the soup? Who makes the soup? Or no, Joyce makes. Joyce soup. makes the soup, so she better know that answer. Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. <laughs> he'll be finished. He'll be almost finished with a pot, a soup, and he'll say, "Are you making soup tomorrow?" <laughs> <laughs> I always kid with her and say, "I'm a chain super." So a I put Bob super. as a soup guy. I put Bob as a soup oh, guy. For sure, for you, sure. Bob, are you a uh, are you a coffee or a tea guy? Coffee. You're a coffee guy. Yeah. Oh, that was good. That could have gone either way, though. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Give him the next one. For sure. All right. Um, Joyce's favorite vacation spot. Go. Maine. Maine. <laughs> and you're on, on the, the beach. beach. Which you can have a double bonus there because yeah. Newport's yeah. on the beach and Maine. Bob, you changed change change right? it to coastal. Maine. Coastal. That's Maine. right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. He's right. He's right, and I'm right. Yeah, definitely. You're both Which, right. You guys <laughs> live on the water potentially. Yeah. So that could be your backyard. Love it. Yeah. Love it. <clears throat> All right, last one. <clears throat> Bob's favorite season. Because, Summer. Uh, that that yeah, aligns with the, with the golf. Yes. It goes yeah, with the golf. Nice. It goes nice. with the golf. It goes with the golf. It goes with the golf. My least is right now. So. Oh, oh my God. But this winter. We don't have oh. a we don't have a winter this year. We don't have a winter. <clears throat> it's going to be 60 degrees tomorrow and sunny. And uh, and uh, I'm sitting at my house. I'm a weather geek. I'm sitting on 5.25 inches on the year so far. Um, New York City just passed the, uh, a record last Tuesday of the most days without uh, a record snowfall, like 340 days mm-hmm. without measurable snow. So, Bob, I do not like this time of the year either. I am a, uh, I am a, a early fall and late spring and summer type of person. And, uh, and as a side note, I actually looked into uh, becoming a meteorologist for a little bit. <laughs> really? That is so cool. When I was looking at different careers, yeah. See, I, soup. I've always soup. Been See, soup. <laughs> soup will do that to you. See? You're just such a so yeah. meteorologist equals soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just it's smart. I, I love I love weather. Well, soup, I, soupy weather, right? Soup, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, love, I love weather. What, what was in New Hampshire, Mount Washington's uh, temperature? <gasps> the wind chill. Oh, negative 109 Negative 108 or negative yeah. 90. Yeah. 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 Crazy. I do that. I would, I would love to... Um, be go on one of those trips um, to the Midwest and, and do a storm chaser for like two weeks and just go chase tornadoes and storms like that. I would absolutely, mm. even though I have two. They're uh, they're remaking uh, Twister. Twister? Mm. I don't think Michaela's gonna like that. She would not like. No. I don't think she'd be into that no. at all. No, <laughs> I don't think so. No. But she doesn't I, have to know. I had you know speaking of Mount Washington, I had showed Laura because she was over today because I did a little snapshot of the Mount Washington last Friday night. Oh, uh, the weather. Yeah, and because uh, we had climbed it. Yes. Um, yes. With uh, Laureen and Jean and that's the crew to go with. Laura and I, so we have that uh, little connection there of being up on top. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I gotta I gotta do a checkmate on that. So I also climb Mount Washington with my own two feet because of Kevin Daigle. So the Daigles in climbing are. Uh, mm-hmm. You did it. Yeah. I did it. I, I drove awesome. it once with the pages because that's what we do. And then <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do we get up there? <laughs> How do we get up there? And then. Uh, Kevin Daigle says, uh, we're just going to hoof it the whole way. I remember being at the top of Mount Washington and watching all these people get into vans and drive back down. And I looked down and I said, we got to walk. <laughs> um, it, what a rewarding, uh, what a rewarding experience that was. But yeah, there's a, you pass a sign when you, when you climb Mount Washington, you, there's, there's a sign that says you're passing, you know, at this spot or entering an area where the, the craziest weather on earth, I don't know if to use the word crazy, um, but the, the, the highest wind or whatever yep, it is, yep. um, negative 108 degrees. That was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Well, I guess you guys passed. Yes, I guess, for sure. I, I, I guess you guys Pretty passed. Pretty good batting average. I Not a big, so, yeah. It's a good batting average. It's a good batting average. Right. We are talking yeah. about um, marriage and love and, and relationships uh, tonight, if you couldn't tell. Um, and I just have a, a, just a blanket definition of what... Um, of what marriage defined is, and then Jonathan's going to give us our, our scripture tonight out of Genesis. But um, here it's marriage defined. Uh, it's an intimate and, co- uh, and complementing union between a man and a woman in which the two become one physically in the whole of life. The purpose of marriage is to reflect the relationship of the Godhead and to serve him. 
Although the fall has marred the divine purpose and function of marriage, this definition reflects the God-ordained ideal for marriage from the beginning. That's from Baker's Evangelical Dictionary of Biblical Theology on Marriage. And Jonathan, you have tonight's scripture out of Genesis. Sure. Genesis 2, 18, 21 through 24. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of a man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and, it is, and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. And there's a, there's an image there of, of, of completeness. So I, um, this tonight is uh, Jonathan and I hope to do some, some listening tonight. Um, mm. and, and I, I just wanted you guys to have an opportunity to, to share, uh, your story or part of your story. So, um, we've, we've just have just as onlookers, we have a, a couple questions, uh, for you. And, and here's my simple question right off the bat. How long have you guys been married? Yeah, it's 40, 41 years. It'll be uh, October of 1981, so. October 1981. Yeah. October what? Uh, 17th. Oh. Yours is my, my, my Mine is October 10th. My birthday is October 16th. That's a good month for birthdays. Yeah, yeah. Fall. I'm October 2nd. You're oh, October yeah. 2nd. It's yeah. a great time for birthdays. Yeah. Where did you get married? In, in Derby. We got married in Derby. Where we grew up. At uh, St. Jude's Church in Derby. Mm-hmm. Well, Jonathan, that just sets that, that set you up for, for your next question because you're on there yeah. too. I'm, I'm fascinated by people married that long and, and knowing how they, their story. So how did you guys sort of come together How'd you back meet? in the what, 70s? Can I start yeah. this? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <I start> this? <laughs> Marriage. <laughs> My family had moved to Derby back when I was nine years old. So I started at... Oh. Bradley School um, at nine years old and we'd go out and play in the yard in the playground and for some reason from a distance I saw this guy this little boy (laughs) up against the teacher and he I don't know he just uh, struck me he was looking at the sky and eating soup and I must have been you know starting to be interested in boys at that time I don't know yeah yeah and then uh, Uh, how old were you nine Nine. you were nine Nine, years old old. no in middle in School. Yeah, yeah, we um, we were f- first quote unquote boyfriend and girlfriend in seventh <laughs> in middle grade. School. In, in middle seventh school. grade. Wow, yeah. wow. Um, he would take and the I lake. always remember walking home. I think we were walking home from church, lake, holding your hand. Late bus. Such a we took the late bus, the second the late bus, bus. Yeah. <laughs> coming home from school, <laughs> wow. and uh, we'd sit together and hold wow. hands. And yeah, wow. kind of cute. So we things. go, we we go way way back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you wow. do. So you were you were not from Derby originally. Where were you from originally? Derby. Oh, you're for, okay. Oh, you're Derby. for both from Derby originally. Both from yes. Derby originally. Yeah. We didn't live too far from each other. Maybe a couple of miles away. And mm-hmm. uh, my he lived across the street from my girlfriend. Gotcha. And my girlfriend would call me because she would be going to mow, mow his lawn. Mow her lawn. <laughs> He's here. He's, He's here. here. He's, He's outside. <laughs> yeah. He's looking really sweaty. We laugh, <laughs> we laugh about that <laughs> one. I think you need some soup. It's I soup. think you need yeah. soup. Well, I and and, and <coughs> was it really from from ni- from seventh grade? You guys just just stuck together. No. Uh, um, no, he broke my heart. He broke my heart, and. Uh, oh. That's page well, number 13. <laughs> no, is, no. Well, we were together for a little bit in seventh grade, and then we kind of separated, had different friends through yeah. um, high school, and then reconnected. Uh, yeah, we had mutual year. friends. We had mutual, mutual friends, but, but we different too. saw other people. And yeah. I had dated a couple of other guys in high school and Bob with other girls. And our junior, no, senior, senior year, year, our yeah. senior year, I don't know, we made that connection wow. again. And, wow. Um, wow. It's just been history. I mean, it kind of, in that shy way, we kind of got reconnected, but um, yeah, it just was became very natural. And he went off to college, mm-hmm. and oh. I stayed behind, and that okay. was challenging. That was challenging. When, when he was in college, it was challenging. Those were very challenging years, yeah, because yeah. you were more of a you were on a career path. I was at in college, the, really becoming independent. You know, relying yeah. uh, on myself and, and so explore, forth. Yeah, exploring um, independence. That's did, scary, Joyce. I did, That's scary. Yeah, I did work uh, for uh, the first two years of college 
in Derby, I, you know, the yeah. job I had gotten my senior year, so I was coming back on weekends. I think that probably the toughest year was my junior year. I was on a ski racing club, and so we would race on Saturdays, and so I was up there the whole weekend, all, oh, all wow. winter for the most part. Wow. And, uh, um, you know, you could, uh, we, we stayed together, of course. We stayed we're here. together, but it was close. But it was a close we call. We had some close calls. Yeah. Where, where, way, did you, way past. where did you go to college? Oh, it was, it was uh, in New Britain, Central Connecticut. Central yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, another, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, but even, see, that's interesting because, you know, I, um, me and Michaela were long distance for, for a period of time, and that was like two and a half hours. But it, it doesn't even matter. Derby to New Britain could be, you know, years apart in that sense. But our, our um, how do, how do I want to say it? We were in different places. Like I went to a one-year business school. He was still in college. College, right. And then I came back after business school. I went to work. So I was already on my career, you know, my mm -hmm. career path. He's still in college. Yeah. And so we were in different places at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of weird because you were the same age growing mm -hmm. up through middle school and high school doing kind of the same yeah. thing. Yeah. But you know what? There was always an inkling between us. When he would come home, we would meet up. We would have breakfast together or lunch together or whatever. And um, we, knew we, we knew we wanted to be with each other, but we right. were in different places. Mm -hmm. we, had to work, mm -hmm. we had to work all that out before... Yeah, we became one, and and that eventually happened. Mm -hmm. I think he realized it because um, I was ready; he wasn't at the time. Right. I think that's a theme in our lives. I think <laughs> we, we, could probably, we could probably speak oh, to that sure. too. Yeah. Yeah. When when did you guys get engaged? Because that was pretty. Yeah. Nin that's a funny I story. Guess oh, we like funny stories. It's really good for content. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers are going up. <laughs> <laughs> hit that. Be sure to hit that like button. He, well, had, we, he had my diamond for a while. Oh. And just, um, he just, would. Yeah. Go ahead. No. <laughs> just trying to figure out when when was the best it time was, to give it to her. It was you, about two years, were, two years, about a year and a half before we got married. But he had my diamond, and I knew it, and I was like <laughs> anxious. I was <laughs> biting the bed. When's he when gonna give it to me? When's he gonna give it to me? Like was slow this, Bob. Was this after college? Or was this after slow Bob? <laughs> 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 the curveball. <laughs> He was still, he was still, just, college. still just college. finishing up college. Yeah. 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 He did a five year I finished, program. I finished in May. Uh, Sorry. I actually, I actually did because Slow I, oh, you, you can't laugh. You can't laugh. <laughs> I did a five college program. Five year program. Yeah. So you were just, just, no, uh, I, I actually changed majors and then, uh, mm -hmm. so it took a little bit longer and did a, a did a half year of, um, of, um, uh, work during school and all that. But, um, so I graduated in May mm. of 81. We got married in October of But prior 81. to that, when did you give me the diamond? You right. gave me the diamond about a year and a half before. Uh, memories. I, I can't remember. Oh, oh. I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> One Christmas, I thought mm. for sure. Mm. I know oh, that's right. Engagement, sure engagement I season. I was going to get yeah. the diamond. And he already had it, and I knew it. So we're celebrating, and the big gift. Now, Bob, Bob and my mother had this all planned that they gave me a beautiful gift, and it was like, okay, it's time to give it to her. <laughs> it was a hope chest. <laughs> and I'm like, where's oh, the diamond? No. Wait, Bob, this you, is gave, it? you yeah. gave Joyce a hope chest for he Christmas? Did. He did. That's pretty good. But it was beautiful. Well, it was that, beautiful I mean, you don't hear like, about those things today. No. It's yeah. like a... a, a but it was more prevalent during that time. <laughs> Joyce is like, ago. which drawer is the ring <laughs> in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was hoping the ring was in there. Where is that diamond? I know. So, but it all, it all worked out. I mean, because soon what? after that, I think it was Christmas, December, and then March, we got engaged. Yeah, I had to mm -hmm. finish yeah. up, but uh, yeah, it's choppy. <laughs> at times. Yeah, it's choppy. <laughs> he tried so Everything. hard. He tried so hard. <laughs> Did you guys have, um, so you guys got engaged, did you guys have a, a similar foundation of faith like at the, at the same time? I mean, how, how did faith play into a role in your life at that stage? Um, that's just interesting to me. You want to take this or do you want me to take it? Well, we'll we can both talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, being in, you know, we, we went to... Uh, church with you know my dad took us every week well, brothers and sister and all that uh, growing up and then college you you know you're away you tend to drift right. away we, yeah. we I drifted away um, and we were really weren't I don't think our first year uh, of marriage I don't know if we even went to church 
Um, second year, yeah. we, um, you know, that's when we both accepted the Lord. Um, wow. But that's how I remember. Wow. You can fill in the details. And here's what really happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We would um, go to the same church, of course, and, and my family would sit on, on the right side, oh. and his family would sit on the left side, and... I'd be like this. <laughs> what a nice family. There's all five kids, and the father and the mother was home cooking dinner. And my family, we came from a very religious family, a Catholic. Mm. My parents have nuns and priests in their families. Wow. So wow. Um, it was always important. The holidays, the uh, religious holidays were always yeah. very, very important yeah. in our lives. So um, for me, faith in my foundation was very strong in the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I was taken, and this was before we dated, I was taken by him and his family and how they were such church-going people. And that was very important to me mm. at the time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I do have a faith background from early yeah. on. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. In our first year of marriage, we, I was searching. He was going along with it. But I was searching, and I was looking for more, and that's where um, actually my mother and my cousin started going to a home Bible study, which we never heard of before. Mm. Home yeah, Bible study. yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and invited to that and shared that with Bob, and we started going to Bible studies. And um, Wow. And that's where our uh, walk of faith. We hear this grew. about every week, you know, kind of looking for more of coming up from a, a Catholic background and looking mm -hmm. for more and taking that step. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start to be a Calvinist here pretty soon after I hear more <laughs> of these stories about the spirit leading, right? Because yeah. it, it was just, it's a search for, it's a search for more. But again, we were, and I was, ca I was very cautious at myself. So there's always that, you know, the timing and, and being on the same page. He was cautious. Exactly. Yeah. He was, he cautious, was cautious, but, but listen. until he were, read the word of God, you know, until he yeah. saw it in black and white, I think that's when you started to grow and move forward. Mm. Yeah, I, I was so. already taken. You know, I was already yeah. there. Mm -hmm. But it took it took Bob a little bit longer because we only knew the yeah. background. What you grew had. up with, yeah. 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 And that was the only way that we knew. And it was a wonderful decision. We both never <laughs> yeah. were good at growing yeah. in the Lord. I think there's a uniqueness to that because, um, you know, I say that, you know, Michaela and I both, uh, knew the Lord. Um, we met. I guess we. I guess we. Me and Michaela met late. Late in life. It wasn't nine. We met around twenty years old. And um, but I, I. I have to. For for Jonathan. I. I. Um, you know Chelsea. Um, had a had a she had an Episcopalian background too, right? Mm -hmm. But um. But we talk about this often that like it doesn't always happen this way, right? Right. That it turns, it, it, sometimes it happens where there is give and take in marriage, mm -hmm. but not when it comes to Christ. Right. You know, and so many times you either live in a split family or one spouse doesn't want anything to do with anybody. And, and, you know, I don't know, I mean, I say Carol and Sissio's background or, or Chelsea. And, and I, I think what I'm getting at is church and, and the church life and the family of faith um, grew during and after marriage. And that's very unique, I guess, is what I mean. Cause, yeah. Yeah. And one one thing for us, I know that Christ has always been the head of our family. Yeah. I was, mm -hmm. I was going way back. Yeah. And there's never been any any doubt growing, about growing that. Growing up in your family and also growing up in my family, and that's what we brought together in our marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of times where where you'll see even here on a Sunday morning, we'll just, you'll maybe you'll see one spouse come or or or. Mm -hmm. or you know, because it's it's just more important, or it is important, and the other spouse is just either out of the picture or not. I, there is something to that togetherness, but it is unique. It, it is there is uniqueness to to. You used to yeah. see it more back in the day, and I think today it's so different. Everybody's so independent and yes. so yes. in their own yes. world, in their yeah. own life, and it's really sad. It's really it sad. it is really it is really sad. Yeah. It is really sad. You know, I used to be nervous like uh you know geez when i find somebody to you know when i get married someday you know i hope they i hope they love jesus too i i think that's where you begin mm -hmm. i think that's where that's where that's where you start and um and uh, i just um yeah oh, that, that's really important <clears throat> yeah. yeah i mean it's, it's right in the scriptures that yeah. you just read <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i, I give chelsea a lot of credit because yeah. it, it didn't take a lot for me to sort of convince her and have her take that 
that leap of faith coming from, you know, a background where she was technically Episcopalian, but not really a follower of anything. That's what I mean. Um, and there is a level of trust. And we talk about like independence, people who are more independent really just don't have trust in anything. And I give Chelsea a lot of credit just for yeah. taking that leap of faith and, and having that trust in, you know, the things I was saying and, she loved you. Family. Yeah. <laughs> she loved you. Exactly. To, exactly. She listened. She, she listened. Could, yeah, yeah, she could have easily have said, Joel, yeah. Jonathan, that's good for you. I'm glad I support you. It's not for me. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. Yeah. That could have happened. Yeah. I think um, one of the, um, getting back to their early years now, yeah. um, es especially our first year of marriage, it, it is interesting because you have two different separate people. Yeah. people yes. Different yep. um, that just come together and then you got to somehow mesh it all together right. and Interbrand, blend it yeah. all together. Right. That and was it, interesting. It takes mm -hmm. time and it takes patience. And I always remember when, when we moved to Waterbury and we started coming here, I think night, we we're 90. trying to figure it, it was a 90, 1990. 1990. Yeah. And uh, there was a whole, just a whole uh, growth period during yeah. that time. There were a lot of young couples and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we did, we did attend probably, uh, you know, two, three, four, uh, marriage um, uh, seminars weekends. or weekends. Wow. weekends yeah. 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 We want to bring that back, and, by um, the way. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, that helped because, um, <clears throat> again, when you go into a marriage, you have how you were raised comes into it, yeah. what, what, you're, what you think comes into it, um, mm -hmm. especially with how you, you, know, you handle different situations and all that. So um i i think i've learned 40 years later uh that you know you need to be patient with each other <laughs> took me many <laughs> moons to well, learn that yeah. what's <laughs> nice about we get like uh weekend get togethers with um uh, uh, about your marriage with other couples mm, you yeah. can share mm, and yeah. you can laugh and you can share in different things that you go through yeah exactly. and you can encourage each other and i think that's as Christians, uh, we need to do that more and more is For sure. lift each other up and encourage one another. Oh, uh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Of all ages. So, yeah. so you guys got married mm -hmm. and then, you know, in, and and the, the, the vows, I mean, we've all heard them, you know, mm -hmm. good, bad, sick, health, rich, poor. Um, and the, and the good, we seems like we, we get that and that's easy. Um, but the bad is where the rubber meets the road a little bit. And in the marriage, there will be challenges and, 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 just as a vague question, how do you get through the bad? Um, because whether you, even though you, you've known each other since nine years old and whatever, you, here's the, you got the hope chest and the ring, you got everything you want, <laughs> you got everything you want, but sometimes <clears throat> crap hits the fan and your relationship gets tested. It does. And, um, you know, when you're young, when you're early in your marriage, you don't think about, you say these vows. Yeah. But you don't think about the bad ones, you know, like mm -hmm. in sickness, mm -hmm. you don't think of the bad days or being poor. You think yeah. of, although we were poor, <laughs> you're always <laughs> poor when you first get married. The honeymoon phase. Um, yeah. 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 But, you know, when you go through those trials um, in life, I think it is our faith that upholds us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in prayer as a couple, as a husband and wife, when we humble ourselves enough, during that breakdown or whatever we're going through, um, we know that we're going to be picked up again. You know, the Lord yeah. is going to be with us. And, and we have praying partners, too. We yeah. have good friends that we grow, that we have this, the same common denominator, the Lord, Jesus Christ, in our lives. Mm. And we pray for one another, and we yeah. uplift each other. And, yeah. and you need mm. that. People need that. One um, of the things I, I noticed about um, Joyce is, you know, when you say your vows when you get married, and it's like, yeah, you forget about them, right? It's like, yeah, you know, just, yeah. Just words. Yeah. But I always notice with Joyce, she this the um, just the seriousness of each word mm -hmm. in the wedding vows that you took to heart, mm -hmm. and um, it's just something I noticed. I said, yeah. "Wow, you know." And you would bring that up at different times through, uh, maybe not with me, but different situations with. Um, either other uh, someone yep. else or whatever the situation you know, might you're be. Gonna, yeah. the you're going to go through the going back to your vows. Yeah. Exactly, because you are going to have good days, and you're also going to have bad days. It's yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. You are going to get sick, and you're going to have good health. And yeah. what are you going to do when you're sick? You know, how do you, what do you do when your your spouse is sick? You know, you just right. and are you going to struggle with finances? 
And that's one right. of the leading things that yeah. causes <clears throat> breakups in oh, sure. is finances. And um, how do you do that? You know, you got to work together, communicate, communication. Yeah, We're going to talk about yeah. communication and, and commitment and just in, in, a, in a second. And we, we forget that the vows are vows. <laughs> Yeah. No Promises, matter what comes yeah. after right. that, yeah. it's a vow. Yeah, it's um, a promise and, to each other. And we were talking before we before we uh, went live tonight. Um, Joyce and I, would, Joyce asked me because uh, there's a statistic: and sixty percent of marriages end in divorce. And, and Joyce said to me, "Is it really sixty percent now?" I said, "Joyce, there's one little footnote I forgot to write down. It's sixty percent of Christian marriages end in divorce. Six out of ten couples that yeah. walk out of this aisle and out those doors, those marriages will, according to the, the stats." fall that, apart that's astonishing um, to hear that and you know there are two good-willed people that have broken down mm. and how does that happen you know how how do you how do you both let that happen yeah. and it's it's a it's a struggle you have to work at it, it marriage is to keep a marriage yeah. going I mean, we've been married 41 years. It's, it hasn't been always easy. No, you right. know, we're dealing with health issues, and um, we've dealt with the loss of a yeah. grandchild. Grandchild, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, you know, there's other things that come to play, but how do we get through it? We get through it through together. together, 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 and through the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Through the Lord. There's no, there's no doubt about that. You know, it, it's it, there's comfort in sorrow, and I and I think misery loves company sometimes. And 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 even we were saying earlier, even in in a smaller <laughs> church like this, you know, we've got we've got at least two couples that are that are separated and will probably end up in 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 divorce. We know a couple already that that have mm. split up, um, and and to have that ratio in a smaller congregation, that that's a clear picture of that. That well, right. I guess mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense. But there's there's even in that even in separation because we don't want to be just even one track here even in separation there's family and that goes back to, to last week that's fellowship yeah. <laughs> and we have fellowship yeah. in that you know i you know we we were joking about not joking but we made light of you know faith family fellowship but what is fa fellowship but a family of faith you just walk mm -hmm. it backwards mm -hmm. um and i and i think you know having having pete and craig on last week listen they're actually in the major in the majority according to the stats they're in the majority. Yeah. Wow. The stats. Yeah. How about that? Um, but and you had it written down, Joyce. That um, and we'll talk about it later. But that in marriage there is three, and I and I and we're going to unpack that here in, in a minute. And and I want to have Bob read the scripture in Ephesians. But I I heard this on WIHS, and I wrote it down uh, my way down here tonight. And many a lot of people hear the, hear the saying. Um, you, you take Jesus with you, whatever situation you take Jesus with you into your marriage. You take Jesus with you. And uh, what they heard on the radio tonight is, is, is the opposite, is that you let Jesus take you. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and so many times they're like, Jesus I'm going to take the wheel. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Jesus take the wheel. But so many times, in, you know what? I'm, we're going to take Jesus with us into this relationship. No, 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 no. Jesus has to be the one to, to you follow him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't follow you. Okay, come on, Jesus, come with us in our marriage and let's hope everything works out. No, no, no. It, you, it's, it's his leading. Um, Bob, I, we have Ephesians 5.33 written down. Could you read Ephesians 5.33 for us? However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband mm. um so the um i have the qu a quote from the famous joyce Sanowski here so this is out of love and respect that <clears throat> ephesians 5 3, 3 is the scripture from a love and respect and, and joyce you had this written down yeah this can be controversial to me. yes people. it can yes it can and i want people to understand and this is what i get from this scripture verse is that respect God is the head mm. of our household. And to respect is to honor each other. And, and God calls us to do that all around. And it's not just that submission, you know, right. complete submission, you know. I, I, it's such, such a well, we're going to talk about the crazy cycle. We're going to talk about the crazy cycle. We're going we're to actually, yeah. I'm going to lean on you to, to, to pick that apart a little bit. Okay. This is something you had written down, and, and we're just, I, I thought that was great, so we're just going to break it apart. It's a marriage takes commitment, communication, listening, devotion, being humble, and forgiving. It takes every single one of those. Tim, I think I got two out of six on that. <laughs> <laughs> those are, those are the, the demands yeah. of marriage. Um, and, and just in terms of commitment in, and we talked about a vow, um, what does that, maybe if, maybe we don't have, maybe we already talked about it, but what does that 
what does that mean? Because in a society that's not committed to anything or anybody anymore. I, I went to a wedding um, a couple of years ago where they wrote their vows and they said, I can't promise you this and I can't promise you that, but I love you today. And that was pretty much the vow and not so many words. And that was the vow. Mm. I'm like, wow, that's completely honest, but you probably shouldn't get, be getting, <laughs> married. <laughs> getting, married. <laughs> getting married. That was the vow. They said they actually couldn't do that. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. So what does commitment, what does that even mean if you just even define it, define it in marriage? Stumped. <laughs> it is, it's a strong word, but it it's, is. it's a permanent word. It's, an, mm. it's a word, you know, the ring is yeah. eternal. Yeah. It's forever. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I could probably get a lot of flack from people in well. regards <laughs> to this, but it is a commitment and it's a choice. It's a choice to be made. And, um, and again, you don't, you can't do it alone. You cannot do this by yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Would you say it's a, it's a daily choice? It's, it's a, a daily, daily choice. choice, yeah. It's that daily surrender, that daily commitment. It's choosing mm -hmm. to commit. Yeah. It's that choice. Yeah. The word, the opposite word that I mm. think of is instead of commitment or choice of chore. And I feel like. Chore, that's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's a reciprocal and, of, of And, and yeah. my point is, you know, a lot of marriages that may happen is you know okay this is a chore to me now this is getting in my way um it's almost a sense of i, I hate to say it, but like laziness um Absolutely. in terms of treating your marriage as a chore and not a commitment or a choice that you're going to you know dedicate yourself to this every day of your life it should be dreadful <laughs> exactly exactly and that's why you got to keep it alive you know you got to keep it alive of what you had when you first met each other and i th i think we're you know we're all busy people uh, mm. for us it's uh, mm. that business has somewhat slowed down we've been empty nesters for a number of yeah. years yeah. but you have to have some you have to laugh too you know yeah, you sure. have to have some just good some laughs humor. and yeah. have some humor in it and uh you know sometimes you just you can't take life too too seriously mm -hmm. he's he's uh he's funnier than I am. I, I take things a little bit more serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, laughter is good medicine. Oh, I'll tell sure. a joke and I'm like, I just went right yeah. over my head. <laughs> I have a marriage like that too, and she's probably watching. <laughs> Mar I, I wrote this down. Marriage is often viewed as a convenience rather than a commitment. And I, and I think that's really what it is. As long as it's good for me. Yeah. As long as it's good for me and good for the moment, that, that's fine. It's convenience. But, you know, Jonathan and I, we, I talk about my, my friendship with, with him, and it's not just a convenience. Not You know, it's, it's a commitment and listen and we may have i mean we'll be friends for the rest of our lives because even aside from even aside from a marriage relationship just even a friend and a brother to brother relationship in that regard um you know we may have a blow up one day god forbid but we may have a blow up i'm still committed to this kid and it's not just convenience where all of a sudden if stuff hits the fan you're out and i think that's you'll never miss the good that god has for you if you just bounce right when stuff happens and uh one one of the things we we've done i mean we talked about early on we went to a number of you know of marriage uh, uh weekends weekends or, things yeah. like that but even even the past 10 years i mean we we taught a love and respect yes. course it, we it, it's interesting how you're it's you're never too old to learn and we mm. we learned a lot Always. we learned about each other and we we learned about um, you know how to take a step back and just uh, being able to. Uh, for me, it's um, it's listening. I, you know, communication mm, yes. is part of communication. Well, yeah, you, Jonathan was going to ask you about communication. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> so that's always been a struggle for me. I, I yeah. think I'm getting better at it, but um, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bob, um, you validated. But <laughs> another, another thing we did a few years ago with with our, our good good friends, the, the Kiowas, they were teaching a, a class called Reengage. I want to hear about that. It was too. probably yeah. the yeah. best best one uh, that mm -hmm. we've ever mm -hmm. done, mm -hmm. and it was just so so thorough as as far as a, a relationship. Deeper. I think it was it went deeper uh, and but very yeah. very good. So. Um, that, that helped too. Yeah. I mean, it's you, we're never too old to continue You're never to too learn young to, or too to be, old. Yeah. You know, right. A couple. Right. Mm -mm. I'm glad you said that, but you, you stole the words out of my mouth, and I think you and I are very alike because I have a yes, I have a listening problem as well. Um, and that's just that's not just in my marriage. It's, it's a man. Just, it's a man it's, problem, it's right, Joyce? Problem. It's a man yeah. problem, right, Joyce? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also something, um, Joyce. I want to add something to your demands. Um, oh, my <laughs> yeah, your demands of marriage. That's a, wo <laughs> that's a woman problem, right? <laughs> oh, don't say demands. I wrote that down. <laughs> I was like, do I sound demands? <laughs> <laughs> this is the demands of marriage. Poor choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
um, the word that keeps popping in my head is is wisdom, um, and yes. and through all yes. you know, retreats and you know just talking with people that have been married for forty years, getting the wisdom from from that helps young marriages. And you know, again, you don't have to be young or old to gain that wisdom throughout mm-hmm. your marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, but back back to communication. I mean, you know, like I said, I have a listening problem. Um, and it's not just with my marriage, it's generally with everything. Um, <laughs> but, um, it, you know, and Chelsea and I do these devos every night and, um, a lot of the devos have questions, you know, um, on, you know, to reflect on the message and the passage. And, um, a lot of the times it comes up like, you know, what can you be doing better or, or whatever? And we, we always say communication, but we're not, <clears throat> we don't have the wisdom or the, I guess the experience to completely understand what that means Mm -hmm. you know how to be a better communicator um you know how to be on you know sort of the same page all the time which might be unrealistic but through a marriage you know what does that look like based on based on your 41 years (laughs) you know the key to communication yes the key i think a lot of us want to be understood And sometimes we misunderstand. I like that. Okay, we misunderstand each other. We want to be understood, but you got to be here. You know, if you if we're having a discussion, and I'm trying to make my point, and he's counteracting that or challenging me that Mm. he's not hearing me. Right. He's not listening. Mm. Listen. Just just listen to listen to each other and bring your points out and come to a common ground. Um, I, I, it's, it's, that is practice. And, and, you and have it, to practice it's, that. It's a it's a an individual and together thing because um, if Joyce is trying to make a point, uh, this has been through the years, and I, I finally you know I'm getting it, I've gotten it. But um, her her first sentence coming out may not be the point. Mm-hmm. So then I would jump in, but she's oh. making her her point over. Uh, a whole paragraph of <laughs> sentences <laughs> and you're jumping at the first uh, sentence so, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I drove arguments. down here just to hear that point tonight <laughs> yeah. because I I kill my wife over that all the time because she yeah. she tells a story from the back to the front <laughs> yeah. you've got to listen you got to use your listening ears because yeah. it's important yeah, you have to zip it as, yeah. as uh, you know as the other spouse um, <clears throat> you really have to let her get or him or her it depends get that whole thought out and for many years I didn't and it would just and oh, it would um, because I would a lot of arguments I would, with that in my mind mm. I would think well this you know this is what you should have said to me right from the beginning what t- took so long or whatever you know what I mean so um, it, it over time I think you, you get mm. to you, you really get to know each other you know and each other. you know um, how to listen better yeah yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the listening <clears throat> part of any relationship, you know, we're talking marriage, is so, so mission critical. Mm-hmm. Right. To tru- and then even to the point of, um, you know, you could respond back at times depending on what the discussion is on. Uh, this is, you know, you, you hear this, this is what I think you said. Did you, is, is this what you meant yeah. type of thing? But, um, you know, when you're busy and you're going out the door, you got work or you got pressures, whatever, we, you could tend not to listen. Sure. Um, oh, yeah. Sure. But I think <laughs> I think it, when you have those times when if the kids, you know, if they're in bed or you're, you're together, just look at each other eye mm-hmm. to eye, face mm-hmm. to face, and really, you know, um, delete everything else that's going on. Oh, so that's, that, really that's, a whole compa- that's, that's a whole other conversation. You, know, you guys are young with young children. You're going to run into issues with um, children wanting to get their way. Yeah, I yeah. went to mommy, and mommy said this, and and but I said no, mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing. Be on the same page, mm-hmm. discuss mm-hmm. it before you give the kids any any um, answer mm. to that, and that's that's another part of communication. Be on the same page right. with your kids. Right. I, I have you a work know? I have a work colleague who um, whose whose friend whose buddy is um, <laughs> going. To, they're going to be separated. They're probably ending up in in divorce and they were married for 18 years and <clears throat> after 18 years you think you know each other um, <clears throat> but maybe you don't and I, and I think this communication piece is big Jonathan because um, you could have that volcano effect mm-hmm. 
I will say Bob does you know, this is bothering Bob, but Bob's not going to share that with you or that's bothering Joyce or the other way around. And I think if you do not communicate, I think this is where the 60% of marriages fail right here. And mm -hmm. it's on the communication, mm -hmm. right? We can work on humbleness. We can work on respect. We can work on loving each other better. We can work on investing in each other's better and making intentional time to be together. But if you don't have the communication piece, do you even have a relationship at all? And I, and I think that's, I think that's really interesting. I th the, the communication, if you are not communicating and sharing with each other, you, where do you even, what do you have other than just a, well, yeah. you know, those coexisting other, relationships. Those yeah. other things do come. You want to they humble do. yourself. You, you know, like if you are wrong, you are arguing with each other, and you know, it comes to the point where, okay, I was wrong in this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay to say, I, you know, forgive me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I was wrong. Yeah. You know, I stand corrected or whatever. Yeah. That's not easy. That's mm -hmm. not easy. No, for a lot it, of people. it's not easy to humble yourself yeah. like that. It's not. It's not. But in and be the, the able to to communicate that, and I think is yeah. is is really huge. And and, and from Ephesians five thirty three, yeah. Bob, when we were we were talking about that. Without love, she reacts without uh, respect, and without respect, she, uh, he reacts without love. Can you break that down a little bit, Joyce and Bob? Because um, I remember that from seven years ago. You guys helped us, uh, me and Michaela, mm -hmm. seven years ago. Um, maybe pick that apart a little bit. I, I always think of this circle, where does it start? The, the love and respect circle. Yeah. And uh, it, it um, always starts from, from the Lord. Um, and it, um, um, it, it's got to start from all around that circle, if you will. We have mm -hmm. that, women have that tendency to love. Men have the tendency to want respect. Yeah. And without either one of them, you're not going to get it. Right. You know, you have to, like, you need to know our language. You know, uh, men no. need to understand the language of a woman and women the language of a man. And, and that takes time. That takes time and practice. Yeah. Um, again, that cycle, it's like being on a treadmill. Mm. You know. mm. The hamster wheel. Yeah. The yeah. hamster yeah, really, wheel. And not really, getting really, anywhere. Yeah. You're not getting anywhere. <clears throat> stop. You know, let's stop. Take a step back. Okay, what is my wife or was, what is my husband trying to say to me? You know, and that that goes back to communication as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. and, and the whole thing, that's a whole subject. And the whole thing itself. in Ephesians yeah. is that, you know, husband loves your wife as Christ loved the church, church. and yeah. died for it. It's so that type of love. That's a very... Powerful. Um, powerful, yeah. yeah. Scripture. It's when you think about it, it's yeah. not surface level. Um, it's it's very it's it, you know very instructional. Yeah. There's an order to it. There's an there's an order to it for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think humbleness it, and Joyce, you you you, you, you planted the seed for it, um, but laying down yeah. your pride mm -hmm. um, and saying I'm sorry is extremely hard to do. Mm -hmm. And that's that probably something. Um, that you just have to do, train yourself in, I, I guess, or just or just die to yourself. Or um, I, I, how do you, how do we do that with you know? With well, we always want to be right, don't we? Yeah, yes. You want to be right, and you think you know <laughs> each you person think right. thinks you <laughs> are usually always am. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, um, yeah. And to and step that, back from you that. know, and that's how it was too. Growing in our marriage too, there was a certain point like you know whatever I you know in the argument I was right and he was right and it, we were not getting anywhere. And then you, as you grow, wisdom, you know, mm -hmm. wisdom comes, you know, as you get into God's word and you're with him and yeah. he shows you, God shows us the way. And, um, and then you just learn, you learn to break down that pride. You learn to say, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, yeah. Will you forget? You learn to forgive, right. you know, right. God gave us forgiveness. We have to forgive and giving grace and mercy to yeah. each other. That's, it's not easy, but it's, it's yeah. what we're called to do. Right. You know, we're called to do that. Chelsea and I, we live, live by two sayings um, that we don't always follow, but it's something we try to follow, and it's pick your battles mm -hmm. and don't let the sun go down on you. Oh, yeah, that's a big one we do. Yeah. And that's, a big one. that's really, yeah. that, you know, I think that's really the definition of laying down your pride and, mm -hmm. um, you know, admitting, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not right here. Um, maybe we're both not right, but... I'm sorry, and you know, yes. I'm. I'm gonna add an interesting angle to that, and this is something that maybe I struggle with. I don't know, <laughs> but, um, but it's how to be right, mm. and here's why: because and and me and Michaela, Michaela loves to 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 sh share this with me that even if I am right, it's how to be right. You be right with with mm. kindness and gentleness, because let's say. 
let's say Spirit. let's say Joyce thinks she's right and Bob thinks he's right, but in reality, in whatever the uh, whatever that that object is, whatever that subject is, Joyce may end up actually make Joyce Joyce is right, and it's it's how do you not to respond well, well I, Bob I not to be nine years old on the playground again in Derby, but like not I told you so, but it's like it's about understanding each other and mm. say listen this is this is why I think this and explaining yourself and just saying well this is the way it is. I think a lot of marriages are like that. Well, this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. I'm right about this. You don't even know what you're talking about. You never know what you're talking about, and the marriage explodes from there. Um, but it's how to be right. Now, listen, I, 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 I see you're, what you're saying there. I understand what you're saying there. This is why I think it is, and you tell me why you think it is, and then, you know, the truth will come out. But it's, it's how to be right, not only, I don't know. It, I what, struggle with that yeah. a little bit. And one of the things I'm going to, change subjects a little bit but switch gears but one of the things that we wanted to at least talk about or or discuss real briefly is that early early on in our marriage and this has really helped us too from an overall picture um a couple at the church we were attending mm. um said that him and his wife um set goals every year mm. yeah and in different categories, you know, you yep. could be spiritual, it's spiritual, mm. financial, vacation, yep. projects, um, education. And we, we started doing that yeah. 40 years I, ago. Wow. Oh yeah, 41 years ago, we still, and we still we, do. We look we, back. A lot of times we would, we would do them and go out to lunch and Review consolidate them. them. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you got to 42 years. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, it but helps. But we're making it work, you know, you have I to know. make it work. Right. That, right. That, Just, one, yeah. that one simple thing um, helps you get on the same page over the next mm. year. Like. Yeah when you think of different um what you want to try and accomplish as a couple and trying to be as honest, an individual okay. yeah. as yeah. um spiritually how do you want to grow and growing together spiritually um although you know those that 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 was really big to me and we still do it mm. i think that's i think that's that's really important because you you don't want to lose track of of each other because we're going to talk about kids here in in a, in a second yeah. and and i think that that can kind of mess up your goals a little bit it uh, does. sometimes yeah because you, you grow you because you grow <clears throat> joyce i want you to read psalm fifty one ten. it's on there and then we're going to talk about kids mm -hmm. psalm fifty one ten. created me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me and that's grounding yourself in the in the lord and kind of pressing the refresh button yeah so in terms of children and we could do a whole night on this topic <laughs> uh for sure um I asked this. I asked this question. I had this this great, and I, Armand Daigle told me this um, a, a couple months ago, and it stuck with me because I um, <clears throat> a lot of people tell me, you know, me and Jonathan have kids that are similar ages. My kids are Luke is going to be six in two weeks, and Gio is going to be three um, in a couple months, and I'm tired. I'm exhausted. We're in the middle of potty training month, uh, and and it's hard and all everybody tells me not everybody but a lot of people tell me oh you know what tim this is the best time of your life this is the best years of your life this is the best time to have kids armin i and i and i said that in passing to armin in october and jonathan's probably already heard me say this and armin looked at me and said it's all the best time of your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel better because I, because part of me is like, Joyce, part of me is like, if this is the best <laughs> that, that, that I get, then I'm in deep trouble. But I, it, it's all the best. But, but you've seen in 42 years, you've seen, you, you've gone through, you said empty nesters from nine years old. You've seen your kids now as nine years old on the playground and, and you've seen them as newborns and, and grow up and gone through the, the diaper changes and then teenagers and Lord have mercy. Now they're driving and, and now they have kids of their own. And the children aspect of, 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 of marriage and that relationship is a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Fair to say. It's a life cycle. And, um, you know, 18, 19 years of your children's life seems like a lifetime. <laughs> so, yeah. But it goes so fast. Ah. And um, Armin is right. You know, it is a good time. You know, there are challenges. You are going to write... Who was it that, um, oh, what's that pastor's name that said, write the tidal waves with them? Mm. 
Oh, Dr. Oh, Dobson. Dr. Oh, James, Dr. James, James Dobson. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And when we were raising our children. Yeah. Get, and they get were, through the rapids, right? Get through with the them. rapids with them. You mm. know, you are going to have, like that. you're not there yet, but when you get there, you will ride the rapids with them. You are going to pick your battles with them. Mm. You're going to let them spread their wings. They're, they're going to need to spread their wings, and you're still going to want that control. I was a mom. I was a, a mommy to my son who was a young adult. And, yeah. um, and that, did go, that did not go very well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had tears, we had arguments, we had wow. words, and <clears throat> I just broke down. I just sat there and broke down on my, the deck of wow. my house. And I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. is he going to walk out on us? Um, you know, is this going to be the end of our, our, our relationship or whatever? And it dawned on me, Lord, he's, the Lord's telling me, Wait a minute. He's my child first. Let me work on him. Mm -hmm. I'll work on you. That's where I. That's where that scripture verse comes for, from. Yeah. Create in me a clean yeah. heart, because yeah. I didn't have a clean heart <clears throat> at the and time. And if, um, and if I could fast forward, yeah. things yeah. have have worked out wonderfully. Tell you the story of all the <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the things with um, with children. Um, again, you have two. Uh, 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 couple coming together with totally different okay. backgrounds on how to raise kids mm -hmm. and that that actually caused a lot of arguments with mm -hmm. us a lot of a lot of um point of contention because we had a yeah. hard time getting on the same page because mm -hmm. of of how we thought we should discipline mm -hmm. um and um if i could say anything for younger couples with kids is make sure you, you You're really talk about ahead of it mm -hmm. to yeah. your to yeah. your um spots Very really important. talk to each other mm -hmm. really try and figure out you know have a have a game plan where it, you're both on the same page because that, that kids don't a need an answer right away us. they don't need an answer they want an answer right away but they don't need an answer right away and they'll respect you both you know mommy and daddy need to talk about this and we'll get back to you mm. Trace, when you, you say your story about you sitting on the deck I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture and I, I don't remember the coordinates but I remember the scripture of train up a child in the way they should go that, yeah and, and they shall not depart. Right. Yeah. And we right. And we always we always dwell on the part that says train up the child and our part of it. But the other part of it is in the way they should go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to allow them to navigate and you ride the tidal wave with them, but sometimes they're in the driver's seat. And that in that regard it's like you can only control so much. Right. Mm -hmm. Um But it's not in our control and, and no. anymore because we've done you know, the first um impressionable years is like I thought it was like a five years. Five oh. years old. I'm oh not boy. sure if it's different. <laughs> yeah. But um, I might be wrong in that. So I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you do you do your best. I mean, we as parents, you don't know anything about parenting when you're first child, you know. Mm. But you go along and you do it, and you make mistakes. And I remember when Paul went to, uh, I was taking him to the recruiter's office. He was leaving for the Air Force, oh. and we had our quiet moment in the car. And then I said, you know. Wow. We, Dad and I were not always the perfect parent, but we loved you anyway. Mm. And I said it wasn't easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy um, raising a teenager, but I'm sure it wasn't easy, you know, being a parent. That's humbleness, Joy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you know, it was it was a very special moment, but it was it was true. Mm. It was it was definitely truth, mm. and it was a growing part of our relationship too. Uh, yeah. I, I think I think what the, you know, Michaela and I are you know we're learning about even disciplining our kids at mm -hmm. the same time or the same way or or different but together. I think Bob, you said that different but together. I think yeah. I actually wrote that down. I think that is that is that defines your relationship, yeah. defines your friendship is different yeah. but together. Um, Jonathan, you're going to get there soon too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's already starting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You come from two different backgrounds, yeah. and what you knew yeah. growing up, and what Chelsea knew when she grew up. You know, you well, bring you, that to the family. Right, and you're learning to understand each other, yeah. and then when you start having children, you're you know now the two of you are trying to uh, apply um, how how you're going to raise them and all mm -hmm. that, and uh, it's it's very challenging. It's always challenging, um, but that all loops back to. Um, um, just being able to talk about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Please tell me I'm going to sleep again soon. <laughs> <laughs> you will. <laughs> well, and I and I say that tongue in cheek um, because we are we are exhausted. We are exhausted, and raising mm -hmm. kids to to see them out the door to the Air Force or whatever it may be, um, 
you just get tired and you need to be refreshed. And I, I think Jonathan was um, had the question about you know was investing in what was investing, about investing in each other investing yeah. in each other yeah yeah so <clears throat> I think that's you know we we walked in here saying you know investing in marriage is like the theme of of this uh, this discussion mm -hmm. and <clears throat> you know when we think of investing or when I think of investing I think of um, you know how am I going to put my effort into something that will give me a return and you know just in, in terms of in investing in in marriage um, it's, it's a funny way to put it but it is really putting it as your priority and ultimately setting you up for the rest of your earthly life mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, what, what do you guys think about that? Oh, absolutely. Like date nights and things like that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, just investing in your marriage because you, you get, I was going to let you finish yours, but to, to, to that point, you know, I think me and Michaela have ridden in the car together maybe twice in the past year and a half. You, mm -hmm. you, know, what I, you know what I mean? And, I, and you, you had mentioned like date nights and things like that. You guys have tapped into some of that stuff and being intentional, right? Yeah, you do. Uh, you know, even if it's the simplest things, just getting away, mm. just getting away from the the grind of the children and the house and the chores and all that. Even going for a cup of coffee, mm. you know, know. Mm. do something simple that, you know, just the two of you that you focus on each other and don't bring the household stuff with you <laughs> right yeah you just want to focus yeah. yeah and it takes time it takes an investment of uh hiring somebody or having someone come to watch the children but you need are you that. available <laughs> yeah yeah you know we right. are we i have, have them first <laughs> <laughs> i've got children here that <laughs> have booked us out <laughs> yeah. so um yeah, but it's good, and I encourage my kids to invest in their time, you know, and um, take that time to go out and, you know, go out for dinner or whatever, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Go for a ride, go for a picnic, you know, whatever. Right. And, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's important. <clears throat> you're absolutely right. I mean, Chelsea and I have, you know, a privilege of maybe going on a date night, like I'll, I'll say maybe once a month, if not once every couple months. And it's almost like you we turn into this mode where we're not necessarily talking about the things that we would be talking about at home with chaos going on. Mm -hmm. And it, it's almost automatic and it, and it encourages me because mm -hmm. it's not like <clears throat> we can, we go out on a date and it's, it's awkward or, you know, it's, it's not any, it's like we haven't missed a step. And again, it's encouraging to me that, you know, we can do those things and kind of get away from everything. Yeah. Um, it's refreshing. It is refreshing. You want to yeah. refresh your, your marriage as much as you can because right. you are busy. Your parents are good examples of that. Yeah. Because your parents do invest in each other a lot. They, they, they monetarily and, and but also, <laughs> but also, also, um, I don't know where they in, are half the time. In time. Also <laughs> yeah. in time. They are, they are buddies and, and they are yeah. friends. And I think you have to. There's a reason why you got married in the first place, Bob, right? There's a reason why, you know, I, I, you know, you guys were together before kids, right? All of us yeah. together before kids and now we have kids. And then once we, we get through the other side, essentially, not that it's a chore, but you always have to kind of not start over again, but rediscover each other a little yeah. bit. And you it was know, in interesting. You don't yeah. 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 Go ahead. If I could say one yeah, thing about, ahead. you know, love languages. And I, I've always, I, you know, our early years of marriage and e even through the mid years, busy, busy, busy with the job and then busy with being on different uh, organizations and boards and all that. But, you know, one of Joyce's primary love language is quality time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was causing friction because I could be at a meeting at night or I could, um, yeah. um, you know, just be busy, busy, busy. And um, so she wasn't being filled. Her tank yeah. wasn't being filled. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, once recognizing that, I you know, made some changes. That the, the love languages, we can have a whole nother night on that. <laughs> Um, if I just want please, to add to the please, uh, please. investment of um, time, if you don't, there's a consequence to that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Because for sure. yes. if you don't and your children are gone, you become str you're strangers. strangers. You're strangers already it's strangers. And how yeah, do yeah. you, because you've already gone this way, and how do you bring that back? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to invest. Keep, keep investing in your marriage um, and fill it. You know, yeah. as best, you know, 
Once a month, if I, you can. I have, a, I have a work colleague who has just got divorced and he has two kids in college. One's in college, one's uh, exiting high school. And, and, uh, and like I said, getting d divorced. And, and he told me, he goes, Tim, he goes, um, spend time with your wife. Because what happened to me is our, our kids became our life, not mm -hmm. a part of our life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and I was surprised because we have a, we have a really, he's one of my best buddies and, and we have a really good relationship, but, and we talk about sports, whatever, what, but he got serious and said, listen, I, if, if I go take your wife on a date, and I'm like, geez, John, his name is John. I said, geez, John, holy, I mean, that that's, sounds pretty intentional, but he goes, he goes, go do it. And he goes, I'd still be married if I did. Mm -hmm. um, he learned after, it, the fact. He learned after the fact. Mm -hmm. He learned after the fact. He learned after the fact. And and, uh, and 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 to be strangers and and you don't and go back to the word invest uh, in each other. That's what will happen. Mm -hmm. um, you just let it get away from you. Um, we're blessed with a lot of couples. I think in this in this church um, that have been married for a, a very very long time. You know, we were talking about um, Bill and Marie uh last Sunday, and 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 we are surrounded by good examples. Um, Bob, you talked about setting setting goals up, and I think that's really important as a task to do um, as a couple. But I, uh, something you also did, and you mentioned it right from the beginning, because we're we're almost done here. But um, is you guys mentioned that you took a course? Now, love and respect was one of the ones that you helped the Michaela and I right. facilitate with. Um, there was also another one during COVID, and I, and I'm Jonathan, not about you, but that kind of gave me a little bit of pause because married 42 years, you think that they would be writing the book on marriage, mm -hmm. but they said during COVID, during COVID, you and I just, you know, just played on our phones or did, did sports or did projects <laughs> around the house. You did your basement or whatever it is. And they're like, how do we strengthen our marriage? Mm -hmm. Like 42 years, we're fine. <laughs> and they, and you guys went and sought out just another tool in the toolbox of like, well, let's even know each other. Or what was the word? Re-energize or whatever Re it was. Re-engage. 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 Re yeah. Re yeah. And that's just, you're just pouring yourself back into yeah. each other. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a key thing, and um, yeah. No, I, I I I appreciate the time that you've spent mm -hmm. with Michaela and I. Um, you guys were were in our wedding wedding, and you read um, Ephesians five thirty three um, in, in our wedding because it, it really didn't mean um, a lot to us. And and listen, if you are watching and and um, and you haven't spent time with your spouse today. Uh, shut off the computer and go, <laughs> go do that uh, in, in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Go, to, go do that, uh, and 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 invest uh, um, um, into your the one that that your heart longs for, the one that you um, became one flesh with, mm -hmm. and for this reason, um, and uh, and reengage uh, your marriage. Seek out other married couples of all ages. I will say um, that um, whether you have similarities or differences. Um, with the person, um, if you're married, you have that in common. So mm -hmm. talk to young couples, you know, like we, Nick and Carolyn, um, talk to Marie and, and Bill, talk to, to Bob and Joyce, um, because we need each other um, and, and all, at all stages of our life. I, I, think it's, I think it's tremendous that Jonathan and I have had people like you guys here just to, just to stand beside with, right? And last week we have Craig and Pete different circumstances, but yet the same together, mm -hmm. yet different, right? Whatever it is. And, um, and to, and to lean on each other that way. That's the beauty of, of the body of Christ. And Joyce, I, I have two, one is your, your, your last statement. I want to, I want to read, um, the last thing you said here, no matter what stage in your marriage you're in, it is good thing to connect with other couples and learn the things that make up a couple in good times and in bad, praying for each other in each other's families. It is a blessing in of itself yeah. and 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 it really it really is it really is we have a gift of two couples three couples in our lives that um are very important to us and we're important to each other because uh we can get together as couples and have a good time and all but we always end our time in prayer praying praying for yeah. each other praying for beautiful our children beautiful mm -hmm. and uh praying through crises that we you know we go through and uh, we just lift each other up so without that i don't know where we would be we mm. we often ask each other how do people do it oh, we mean michael ask that all the time how do they do it yeah without it you know we say that about me michael and i say that about here i mean geez how do you live life without a without a church family like this mm -hmm. i don't know how do you how do you do it i mean as as imperfect as we are 
how do you not have those resources available to you and that family available to you? I mean, how do you go through life just, yep. I'm just going to do it on my own. Yep. I'm just going to do it on my own. And that doesn't, that doesn't go very, very well. Yep. Um, I, there's a reason why, obviously, we, 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 we reached out and, and picked you guys to, to come and chat with us a little bit. Um, thank you guys for, for coming out um, thank you for this, uh, this time of the night. Um, I, I'll say this, that this couple here as, uh, it means, uh, means a lot to Michaela and I because they were there with us. But um, lean on them. I'm just going to put a plug too to <laughs> harass them. But <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, if, if you know, they, these are just uh, just another resource, right? Just another tool. You you know, we just operate now. Our stories and our testimony is just a tool in his toolbox. Mm. We Absolutely. you know he we're, he, we're he telling his story. he's the potter. Yeah. We're the clay. Yeah. Lord, whatever experience, the good and the bad that you guys have experienced in life, you now turn that around and recycle that mm -hmm. for his glory and stand beside others. Maybe we're going through similar things. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you say, listen, I've been there, mm -hmm. I know, and this is how we got through it. And this is how I can help you. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So for Bob and Joyce Sanowski, Jonathan Sissio, I am Tim Page. Thank you for hanging with us tonight. Um, we do not have a program next week, um, for Valentine's day. Um, but we'll be back here in about two weeks. So thank you so much. Have a great night. Thanks. Love you guys. Good night. Good night. How fun was that?